Use them in sugar free. Wish you all could be California. Diet Sun Kiss. Diet Sun Kiss. Having babies tomorrow night at 7 30. It's kind of sudden, isn't it? Jody and Gavin being invited to a fancy dress ball. I know it. I was so surprised, but I gather it has something to do with the theater. At least that's what Jody implied. Well, that's good. It's nice she has a distraction after all that's happened. I know it. I'm so glad she'll be able to get her mind off that place for a little while. That place being the Republic of Eden? Yes, you know, it worries me, Miles. She thinks about it all the time, and she believes everything those kidnappers told her. Somebody described it as brainwashing. Maybe it was at that. Oh, I hate to think that that's happened to her, but I suppose anyone's vulnerable. You know what she's vulnerable to? The romance of the whole story. I haven't you ever thought that maybe you might be a, a long-lost princess of some kingdom? <laughs> Somewhere over yeah, right. the rainbow. See, even if, even if it's a... <laughs> A fabrication or a mistake or just wishful thinking on the part of uh, those fanatics still has got to have affected Jody. Uh, Marie Bonaventure. Ah, she even the name is romantic. A martyr. Died for her beloved country. All that's missing is Prince Charming. Oh. Ah, there he is now. Yes, Oscar. Yes, we are. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, well, I guess we'll see when he gets here. Thank you very much. It's Gavin. Well, maybe we can find out what this dinner is all about. That's right. Let's grill him. All right. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. Last time he had to wear one of those, we had to tie him down to get him into it. Yeah, I never thought I'd be wearing one again, especially so soon. So, what's this dinner all about? Jody was a little vague about it all. Well, she was a little vague about it with me, too. It's some kind of dinner, a benefit, I think. What, something to do with the theater? What? Did you hear about the Whitney? Gavin, you just told me about it this afternoon. Well, you didn't tell me about it. Well, what about it? Oh, well, Skylar Whitney has finally decided to let Jim Diedrichson use the theater after all. Isn't that incredible? He sounds a lot more generous than the former holder of the estate. Mm, well, from what I heard, Valerie Bryson talked him into it. I think he's a little interested in her. Well, that's a bit of juicy mm. gossip, but it still doesn't explain what this dinner is all about. Oh, Gavin, you're here already. Oh, Jody, you look so... Stunning. Makes it almost worth my while tying this tie. Well, thank you. I couldn't ask for a better compliment. <laughs> I'm still in problems with it, though. The ends don't really oh, match. Oh, you do look ravishing, Jody. I have to agree. Thank you. Uh, Gavin, let me see if I can do something about your tie. Why don't you come over here? Have they been asking you about the dinner party? Yeah, all I can do is avoid the question. Well, just tell them it's some kind of a, I don't know, theatrical benefit. Well, I hate to lie to them. But we certainly can't tell them the truth. Well, maybe they'd enjoy hearing it. I can't believe we're going to do this, crash a party at the Consulate of Eden. Edge of Night is brought to you by squeezably soft shaman bathroom tissue. And by the comfortable diaper, loves disposable diapers. Your baby's comfort begins with love, love. I'm home. Hi. There's my little short stop. Real functious as ever. That's why Brian wears loves. A baby this active needs a really comfortable diaper. Loves. Love's hourglass design is tapered to fit. It cradles him in comfort. Love snuggles up gently, no matter how hard he's kicking. Love. All elastic diapers don't fit the same. Compare yours to Love's. Hold it up to the light. If the padding's wide, it has to bunch up between your baby's legs. Love's padding's curve to fit comfortably. Love. Love's is so absorbent, it helps keep him dry night and day. Here you go, slugger. <laughs> You'll be the most adorable baby on the team. Your baby's comfort begins with love's, love's. Hug me, squeeze me. Mr. Whitworth? Huh? 
You've changed. You're not out here saying, please don't squeeze the Charmin. No one ever listened. Oh. But squeezing got you to try Charmin. The softness keeps you coming back. How soft is Charmin? Watch. Drop a fragile egg. But on Charmin, it won't break, because Charmin's so cushiony, so squeezably soft. Charmin, the squeezing gets you, the softness keeps you. Hey, Chief, I wonder if I might have a word with you. Yeah, but make it fast, will you, Tyler? I'm having dinner at the Cavanaugh's tonight, and I've yet to be on time once with these folks. Well, I thought you might be interested in a couple of tidbits of if information. It's gossip, I don't want to hear about it. This better be police work. It has to do with a couple of names that we've heard a lot of in this town. Dwight Endicott and Eddie Lorimer. What about them? Oh, I think the two are linked. Now, is that worth a couple of minutes of your time? Yeah, it sure is. Come on, what do you got? Well, you remember what Jody told us. Now, she said the kidnappers indicated that Mr. Endicott was more than Mr. Coulter, that he might be wrapped up with the mob in this town. Yeah, that may be fact, but without any details, we're just guessing. Okay, I'll give you a detail. The Endicott Art Gallery. Ooh, I thought that was Grace Endicott's place. No, oh, I think that was just for convenience, I mean, putting the title under her name. Look, Chief, there's an Endicott Corporation. The president is Dwight Endicott. Now, I checked right, on the... Get to Lorimer. How does he figure into this? Now, wait a minute. That's what I'm trying to tell you. The legal owner of the Endicott Art Gallery is none other than that famous art connoisseur, Eddie Lorimer. You're not serious. I am serious. Now, the question is, is this just a coincidence? Well, it may be. It may be. All right, let me think about this. Maybe, uh, Dwight Endicott was in debt over his head. He sold the place to bail out. Maybe that's possible. Eddie Lorimer, always looking for a good deal. Maybe he bought the place to improve his image. Maybe he doesn't like being known as the... The junk king. All right, that's two reasonable theories. They're not very good, are they? Come on, what do you think? I think maybe those kidnappers were telling the truth. Maybe Endicott is tied up with a mob in this town. And he left town when that link started to break. Exactly. I mean, maybe he was too greedy, or maybe he just couldn't do his job. Maybe Eddie Lorimer didn't like the guy. Who knows? I think you've got something here. I think this may be it. Unfortunately, it's not enough to nail Eddie Lorimer. I mean, it's not a crime to run an art gallery. If only we had gotten our hands on that Pietro guy. Chief, I still don't understand why Loomis had to shoot that girl. Oh, by the way, we have identified her. Who was she? Her name is Marguerite Farrell. We identified her through her fingerprints. She's an exchange student. Here it is. She's been in the country five years. Four years in Monticello University. An honor student. There's no uh, record here of any political ties. And she was... What? Engaged to... Uh, Ellis Campbell. Yeah. You think maybe that was Pietro? Well, we're checking on that. Is that her picture? Yeah. Well, she's very pretty. Very young, too. Not much older than uh, Jody. You know, it's too bad that Loomis was such a good marksman. Dear Mr. Lorimer, where's my glasses? I'm always losing my glasses. Since you obviously do not require my services at the gallery, please accept my re-sign... Resignation. That's what I said, resignation. As of the date of this letter. Where'd you get this thing? It was just sitting on my desk when I came in. I have left all information concerning inventory sales, accounts receivable, accounts payable, expected deliveries in the file marked current. The general ledger is in the office along with all other accounting materials. If there is any further information you require, please call Emma, have uh, Maya, uh, the bookkeeper. Her number is blah, blah, blah. The chick is taking a walk on us. Uh, there's a second page, Eddie. Did you read it? No, it's probably advice from her. Take a class in art depreciation. You read it for me. I don't know what it is. <clears throat> I wish you luck with the gallery, but I believe you would be well advised to hire someone who knows this business. People who buy art like to feel they are dealing with an expert who understands value which you obviously don't. That chick has got a big mouth, you know that? As to that other matter, what other matter? What other matter? I don't know what other matter. As to that other matter, remember my warning, one martyr is enough. One thing I do not need is advice from Grace Apricot or Endicott, whatever her name is here. Eddie, what's going on here? I mean, when are you gonna let me in on it? Listen, we got a small problem. You understand there's this little girl who's making life miserable. It's no big thing, it's nothing at all. Jody Travis, isn't it? I keep hearing her name all the time. It must be her. 
Listen, this whole thing is getting very, very deep now. I'm not exactly sure your head can handle it. Do you understand? Oh, that's true. After all, I never got out of the fifth grade. Or was it the fourth? All right, all right. So you had an extensive education. Terrific. Now, what I'm trying to tell you here, that we got a serious problem. You see, in this world, there are certain people that really don't deserve to be here. Now, I don't mean to say I'm going to go around killing people. But what I'm saying is that sometimes these people, these problems get to be very hairy. Now, this little girl is one big problem. Because although she don't deserve to be here, we can't snuff her because if you snuff her, she's more problems dead than alive. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's very simple. Yeah, I understand. Good, terrific. Uh-uh-uh, a lady shouldn't use a sticky roll-on. Huh? A lady shouldn't use a scattering spray. What choice do I have? New Ladies' Choice Solid Antiperspirant. After comparing it to the sticky feel of the leading roll-on and the spray of the leading aerosol, most women chose the smooth, dry feel of Ladies' Choice. It goes on dry to help keep you dry. All day, every day. Ladies' Choice helps keep me dry. All day, every day. Make your choice Ladies' Choice. High noon at 98 in the valley. 98? Boy, but I like some ice cold. Hey, orange juice right now. Yeah, orange juice would sure hit the spot. High time for something cool and good. Hi, Harry, the usual? Nope. Today, make it orange juice. 100% pure orange juice from Florida. It isn't just for breakfast anymore. I'm on my way there now, in fact. Uh, I just checked out of the hotel tacky, for good. So you mean everything's awaiting your arrival? My staff is there preparing it now. Well, so why are you delaying the moment by stopping here? It's not much of a delay. And besides, after waiting for so long, one likes to delay just a bit. Postponed moment, savor it, relish it. I know what you mean. Come in. Thank you. And it occurred to me that the moment might be enhanced if I weren't alone. You're not asking me to go with you. On your triumphant return into the enemy camp? Ah, but the enemy has been routed, and the territory is once again mine. Wouldn't you like to join me, Val? No, Sky, I don't think that would be right. Napoleon didn't have a woman with him when he entered wherever it was. Waterloo, which is probably why he lost. Sky, you fought hard to win this battle, and you did it all by yourself. I had a little help from my friends. Just the same, don't you think you'll relish it more if you're alone? All right, you win just this round. But just remember the promise you made me after I gave your friend Jim the use of the theater. You're going to have dinner with me one day very soon at the house. All right, but you have to give me some notice. I will. Okay. And just uh, one more question. Would you have come with me to the house if I'd carried you across the threshold? We'd have to be married to do something like that. Yes, we would, wouldn't we? Seventy-four. Come on, Mrs. Whitney. Good, good. Seventy-five. Good. Use your breath. Use your breath. Firm your stomach. Seventy-six. Mrs. Whitney, just a few more. Come on. Oh. Just a few more. Let's go now. Good girl. 75. Wait a minute. I just did 75 and 76. No, you didn't, Mrs. Whitney. I did too. Get off my feet. I don't need this place. I'm going home. I'm already gorgeous enough. Good riddance, gorgeous. I'm bouncing, but my hair gets so dirty and oily, it won't bounce. So I shampoo a lot, but then it can get so dry, fly away, it won't behave. But I discovered PERT. No other leading shampoo has PERT's cleaning conditioner. My hair's not over clean or over conditioned. With PERT, it's so clean, it bounces. Bounce, bounce, and so manageable.
eligible is the haze. Whew, that's pert. Do you think getting one or two cavities a year is something to smile about? Crest doesn't. Look, over time, that could mean a mouthful of cavities. Oh. That's why we made advanced formula Crest with Floristat. Kids tested Crest with Floristat against Crest without it, and the Floristat kids came out with a lot fewer cavities. Crest can promise no cavities, but we're working on it. Advanced formula Crest, working for the day when kids won't know what a cavity feels like. My mom always says... A penny saved is a penny earned. I save with this. Place not, want not. Dawn handles more grease for the money. Are you sure? Am I your mother? Look, I've washed greasy dishes in an average bargain liquid and Dawn. See, Dawn handles more grease for the money. Keeps grease away from dishes. With Dawn, dishes look great. My hands don't feel greasy. They'd look better with a wedding ring. Next time, call. Dawn, handle more grease for your money. You know, the bar isn't the only place that needs dusting, Gunther. Yeah, well, it's the only place I don't mind dusting. Look, I know you're not crazy about housework, but I just thought if we both pitched in... Uh, look, you're supposed to be the business manager, right? Well, why don't you make it your business to hire some cleaning types and bring them in here? I intend to do just that. All I'm asking is we get the place halfway clean before Mr. Whitney gets we? here. We? We, he says. Ha! Huh, you haven't lifted a finger. We'll be getting some help soon. The new housekeeper is on her way. A housekeeper? Oh, so you did hire someone. Huh? No, I uh, suppose you want we to answer the door. I'm sure you can handle it, Gunther. Right, we, myself, and I. Dust the floors, mop the ceilings. Enough. Well, so you did manage to get yourself hired, huh? I knew Mr. Whitney wouldn't let me down. Oh, Gunther put me down. <laughs> oh, don't let old Spence make you nervous. <laughs> because of old Spencer agreeing to have Nora work here, that Mr. Whitney hired her, Gunther. What? It, it's true. Gunther had to give Mr. Whitney his approval, and I promised him faithfully to do my job, and I'll give you any reason to complain. Oh, hell, they ought to be glad to get you, honey. Listen, nobody keeps a house like Nora does. You know that, Spence. She really cracks the old whip. Well, then try <laughs> to do your best to not lead her astray, because Nora knows she's only here on a trial basis. I swear you won't regret it. Uh-oh, sounds like the boss. Get oh. rid of this. Nora, get your bags out of the way. All right. Got to get the door. Car, Gunther. I'll see you, sir. Oh, no hurry. No hurry at all. Hey, Pa. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, this is kind of a new line for you, isn't it? Don't you know there's a doorbell outside? Well, sure, the door is open, and this is a public institution, isn't it? It's just more courteous to ring the bell. That's something Grace Endicott taught me. But I forgot. They don't teach courtesy at the police academy. Hey, you're not very friendly. What's wrong? Oh, why should I be? Well, what is it that you want here, anyway? Came over to see you. Still trying to nail Eddie for something, aren't you? You think maybe his buying the gallery is some kind of a criminal offense? Hey, look, I don't care if uh, Eddie Lorimer buys an art gallery or a glue factory. Look, I really just want to see you. I... Maybe you and I could have some dinner or something. What? So you can try and get some more information out of me about what Eddie's up to? Oh, come on. What do I have to do? Take a lie detector test? Look, I swear I will not mention Eddie Lorimer's name. Not once. That would be something different. Look, why don't you give me a chance, huh? What do you have to lose? Well, actually, I, uh, I have a lot to lose. Okay, I'm sorry. Look, I know I've been rough on you the last couple of times I've seen you. Why don't you give me a chance to apologize? Come on, what do you say? 
Oh, well. All right, I'll be through here in uh, about 15 minutes. So let me go type these letters, and uh, I'll be right back, okay? Great. I'll wait right here. The girl was just a college student. She was engaged to this guy, Pietro? Well, we're waiting to get a description on this guy from the college. If it matches up with the one Jody gave, I'd say... Oh, Derek, do you think it's possible that Jody really is who they think she is and that she can accomplish what they want? I don't know. I can't comment on that. Really, all I'm concerned about is what happens here in Monticello. So are we. Now, you understand that it's terribly important that we keep this very quiet because if some other political terrorist group from Eden found out the truth about what they said, they might want to take another crack at her. No, I can appreciate that. Believe me, there'll be no leaks from the police force. Let's just hope the press doesn't get its hands on it any other way. Oh, I don't think they will, but we're all going to have to keep our mouths shut. That includes Jody. Well, Miss Travis, are you ready to crash the party? <sighs> ready. Well, I just hope we don't run into what's-his-name Winks. Well, keep your fingers crossed and uh, get your crash helmet ready. <laughs> Here goes. Hello? Come in, please. Thanks. Good evening. Well, well. And what are you two doing here? Sarah Lee introduces its new revolutionary pudding in the middle cake. Oh, sure. Another one of those pudding cakes where you can't see the pudding. I see the pudding. I see lots of pudding. There's pudding in every bite I take. It's moist, fresh. I love this cake. So, uh, how do you like new Sara Lee pudding in the middle cake? Oh, it's all right. <laughs> Cause nobody doesn't like Sara Lee. In four delicious flavors. On Saturday nights, my sister Lori was official perfume tester, makeup advisor, an all-around little Miss Fix-It. And she's still my biggest fan. Even though we're miles apart, we call each other most every weekend when it's cheaper, so we can visit longer. Stay close to someone you love this weekend when a 20-minute state-to-state call is only 406 or less, tax included. Reach out and touch someone. General Hospital. Please give me a chance to prove how much I still love you. I don't want your proof. I can prove it to you right now. Please let me. General Hospital. Weekdays. Here on ABC. Actually, somebody in the consulate invited us to this party. Oh, really? And who might that person be? It was a friend of mine, and her name is Grace Endicott. Endicott? Oh, one moment. No, there was an invitation to a Mr. Dwight Endicott and his daughter. No, that's her, that's Grace, and I happen to know her very well. Yes, and if you'll please go get Miss Endicott, we'll settle this whole thing. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid you don't understand. She isn't here, and neither is Mr. Endicott. They both sent their regrets. Well, actually, they wanted us to use their invitation. No, I'm sorry. The invitation was not transferable. This dinner party is in honor of a very distinguished personage, and it's strictly private. So if you don't mind... John. Okay, okay, Mr. Winks. I will let this whole party thing slide if you just get the ambassador out here and let us talk to him for a couple of minutes. That's utterly impossible. He's the host. We just want to talk to him before he leaves tomorrow morning. No. You are not going to talk to him, and you are going to leave right now. John, will you see these people out? Please. Well, so much for crashing the party. I don't believe it. I, I, I at least thought that we'd get to see who was in there. Well, we do know that the Endicott's weren't. Oh, Jody, why don't we just go home and get the whole thing? Home? Well, how do you expect to explain that one? All right, well, you know, we can go to the opera or something. No, I've got a better idea. Let's go hit the town for a nice romantic evening. Gavin, there's got to be some other way in there. Oh, sure, I'll go find another entrance, just break in the place. Do you really think you could do that? I was just kidding, Jody. 
Wait a second, wait a second. There, there must be another door open around back. I mean, after all, it is really a very warm night. The place has got to be air-conditioned. Well, it doesn't hurt to look. Oh, all right, but just to make you happy. Now I want you to stay right here. looks pretty old. I bet if you just gave that a pull, it would open right up. You're crazy, you know that? What do you want to do, get me beheaded? Good luck. forward all evening to a talk with you. Fine, but I can't stay very long since I am the guest of honor. You'll learn the meaning of easy cleaning with the only foam that slides off. When you foam the tub, you don't have to scrub with the only foam that slides off. When I clean the bathroom, I want to know I'm killing germs. So I use Lysol Basin Tub and Towel Cleaner. Its foaming action kills household germs, shines without scratching, stops mold and mildew. Lysol Basin Tub and Towel Cleaner, the only foam that's Lysol. Like most mothers, I'm a worrier. And when my Cindy's teacher called and said she was having trouble seeing the board, I took her straight to the Pearl Vision Center. The doctor gave Cindy all kinds of tests and then took the time to talk to me. This is my baby. Do you think I trust her eyes to just anyone? <laughs> Nobody cares for eyes more than Pearl. Yeah. 